Hello Team FD and welcome back to Winners and Losers where we break down the latest and greatest Premier League action. Now Joseph and I have already today chalked off our winners which were Manchester United and Casemiro. Now we're delving into our losers and this week we've opted for a few managers mm. with an emphasis on Frank Lampard and Everton because of course they got whooped 4-1 uh, at home by Brighton. I mean, they were pants, Joseph, on all fronts. Outshot 10 to 19 at Goodison. Only produced an XG of 0.3 from open play. Ugh. 10 of the shots they conceded inside their box and Opta defined four of those as big chances. So, not even a generous scoreline, it would seem. Uh, this leaves the Toffees in 18th place. Level on points with West Ham, I think on 15. Oh. Uh, except the underlying numbers for the Hammers, not horrific. Maybe they can count themselves a little unlucky to be there, but Everton deserve it. Joseph, what is going on underneath the hood, mate? Not looking good on pretty much any count, yeah. is it? It's really not looking good on any count. I think the lack of goals in the forward areas continues to be a massive issue Stinking. for Everton. They just cannot score goals. I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Neil Mopé the strikers in the side are obviously still on one goal apiece. Damari Gray, I think, might be the top scorer. Obviously, an amazing goal against Man City at the weekend yeah. and did get his penalty as sort of a, a, a like a consolation goal against Brighton. But not only Him are the and struggles, Anthony Gordon on three. Yeah, yeah. Not only are the struggles at the top end of the seat, uh, top end of the pitch happening. Now you're starting to see what is the underlying numbers coming to fruition. Yeah. You know, at the start of the season, um, you in particular, you and Pat were very vocal, weren't you, about, you know, the underlying numbers are not good at the back for Everton. I know that they're keeping clean sheets and they did go for a run of, you know, a lot of clean sheets and, and lots of good solidity. At least yeah, it looked like that, right? People about Tarkovsky yeah. going, going to the World Cup with England, weren't they? But the underlying numbers, even then, were not good. And now they are coming home to roost a little bit, aren't they? <laughs> I mean, they've only got a minus 10 goal difference, but that could rapidly get worse. Yeah, it really could rapidly get worse, given some of these numbers. 16th for expected goals so at the top end of the pitch, struggling like we said, but 18th for expected goals against 18th for shots per game, 20th for shots conceded. 20th, conceding 16 and a half shots per 90. That is just unacceptable. Eerie. The underlying numbers are coming home to roost for Everton. And alarmingly... I don't think they've got the budget to go out in January and change much. No. It doesn't appear that they can go and dip into the market and sign a big player. And you look at the squads of the play teams around them, you mentioned West Ham there. West Ham squad is, is infinitely stronger than mm. Everton's in this position. I am seriously concerned for Everton here. Uh, I think that they are very much in a relegation dogfight. Three of the next five fixtures, Joseph. Manchester United, Arsenal and Liverpool. Obviously, have a huge tie, uh, I believe, away yeah, against Southampton. Southampton relegation, yeah. dogfight, uh, proverbial six-pointer, etc., etc. But yeah, is there any point bringing in a new manager to face opposition like that in the short term? That is the thing, isn't it? If, you, if, you, if Lampard did lose his job and they were to bring in a new manager, you would think that he's going to lose three of those five for the next fixtures being Manchester United, Arsenal and Liverpool which is a tough, tough position to come in the only positive about that would be is he would have his January window mm. my issue with it is that they've just had a four week pre-season effectively Everton and it would have been a better idea potentially to bring a manager in prior to that yeah. and give him what would be time to work with the players you know they didn't have loads of players going to the World Cup Everton so he would have been able to have a miniature pre-season now you've lost that and you are scrambling against time I think this is it's a difficult one for Frank Lampard he needs a result a big one from either Manchester United Arsenal or Liverpool and having said that he drew against City at the weekend it didn't really have any effect in the Brighton game following on to it did no. it? Do you think uh, Mashiri obviously giving him that many pre-season like you said mm. points towards a manager who is perhaps safer than us in the media are making out at current or do you think it's getting to the point where a decision has to be made because against Brighton one of the most disjointed performances I've seen from anyone all season. Defensively, an absolute embarrassment, yeah. which with players yeah, like Tarkovsky, uh, Connor Cody and, and Pickford in goal, it, it shouldn't be that yeah. shambolic. I, I thought they actually had an OK summer, Everton. I didn't think it was that bad. Like I thought bringing in players like Tarkovsky, bringing in Connor Cody, I thought... Um, 
uh, in the midfield Anana. With, with Anana coming in. Yeah, after totally okay. put his name there was was pretty bad by me. But um, I thought they was all right. I thought those, some of those signings were okay, and it's just not happening yeah. on any level right now, is it? I, I think there are massive issues at that club that you know aren't Frank Lampard's fault. Yeah. Some of the spending over the years has been much highlighted, and Everton fans, you know all about this. There's so many issues at boardroom level at Everton that you can't really say this is totally Frank Lampard's fault, but at the moment, tactically, things aren't working, mm. um, and they may have to change in order to stay in the league. I think at this stage and, and you know there are managers like Sean Dyche available right now and I think Everton will be considering a manager like Sean Dyche who has a proven track record of keeping lower level squads in the division mm. just the are, financially because they've got a stadium to build they can't be in the championship building that stadium it's very very true it's a good point and they are getting to the point now aren't they where whoever is the next appointment defensive stability has to be their speciality um, yeah. because they are getting so porous at the back uh, that needs rectifying there's managers like Marcelino on the market you know when Rafa Benitez left I spoke about Rudy Garcia Gattuso in the past they're in jobs now uh, someone who is really technically savvy uh, that could show up that defence immediately uh, might be a solution. Marcelino, of course, I think out of a job since his uh, stint at Athletic Bilbao. Daesh not, looms, looms large. Yeah, right I'm not sure if he is the answer. Maybe Daesh is slightly more realistic. But yeah, like you said, spent 80 million euros in the summer. Did lose Richarlison. Yeah, exactly. A massive loss. Um, but they don't look better for it. I, th I think it was around eight senior players coming in yeah i really like some of their moves though i'm yeah. not, not going to come in here now and say that I, I was hammering those summer moves i thought onana was a really good addition i thought he started the season really well yeah i mean we liked onana maybe a little bit of an overpay but did what they had to do uh Adrisa gay coming back thought that was going to show up the midfield but none of that midfield uh, the two aforementioned names and awobi are better than league average passes at the moment yeah. uh they can't defend uh, they can't score. I mean, like you said, Damari Gray, joint top goal scorer now. Can't retain or progress the ball. Um, so things are looking pretty ominous for Frank Lampard at the moment, mm. and I do not back him to get results. Uh, so you against, think, against do you think he's going to win the sack race, though? Win. You say win, it's a weird term, isn't it? But do you okay. think he could be the next name on the chopping block? Maybe let's men bring our other names into our other candidates and I'll decide okay. come the end. But I am leaning towards him at the moment. I mean, Moyes, Nathan Stark. Jones is already in big trouble that's a bizarre one isn't it the Nathan Jones thing I mean David Moyes is definitely under pressure given he I think third highest spend in Europe in the summer bought in some massive name players 180 million mm. pounds worth of outlay on a squad that was already you know in a pretty decent position with players like Declan Rice um, I thought that the addition of Skamaka was slightly bizarre I didn't know where he was going to play and it's kind of proven out to be like that that David Moyes hasn't been able to bed him into the team in the way that he wanted to but Paqueta came through the door we were very excited about him coming in from Lyon weren't we yeah what a player I, there are there are big problems at West Ham and West Ham fans are absolutely up in arms about their performances and rightly so man like this time last season they were sixth in the league mm. now they're battling relegation after 180 million pounds worth of spending in the summer and the accusation gets leveled at Moyes uh, time and time again doesn't it that the higher level player he gets the more the less output he gets out of that player like he gets a lot of output out of players when they're playing above their station and he can really grind them out but can he get the best output out of actually elite level players it remains to be seen he's he's got to turn it around quickly I think David Moyes 2-2 mm. against Leeds is not a good result for West Ham last night no I think uh, the season they're having or the start of the season they're having a little bit reminiscent of Leicester's last season in that they're probably better than their numbers are suggesting I think yeah. Moyes they keep Moyes until the end of the season. They will finish uh, around mid-table and no lower. I don't think what fifth. What is it? But they 16th, want more than that. That's the thing, isn't it? That is the that is the thing. They want they wanted to be pushing for Champions League football. Yeah, and it was and it was a season where opportunity did sort of beckon because the top four exactly are, as bad as they've ever been. You know, Manchester sitting off on the side. Uh, well, as bad as they've been in the last decade, let's say, or and they're looking, as inconsistent. And they're looking at Newcastle, aren't they? And they go in. Is the squad that was supposed to be us? Yeah, is the squad no <laughs> noticeably worse? We did that, dropped 180 million pounds yeah. in the summer. We we should be pushing for European football, and we're battling relegation. So I think the difference between a manager like Lampard, who his expectations are effectively stay in the league, stay in the league. Moyes' expectations are get us European football at minimum. 
like mm. get us in be pushing for trophies in some in some quarters and they are down in that position so i i, I do worry for Moyes, but i also would stick with david Moyes. i think the underlying numbers stick with Lampard. The, um no i would stick with Moyes As, to win the sack oh stick with him right stick I get with him Sorry, i wouldn't be bad. sacking david Moyes right, yeah. right now even though he is under a lot of pressure yeah i'm going to stick with lampard i think for the sack race uh, i still think that it'll, it'll be a decent manager at some point but the remit he's got at the moment um, maybe not suited to where he is mm. at uh, at the moment in his managerial career. Um, yeah, so so Nathan Jones, I think, uh, has equaled that unwelcome record uh, set by the Boer as well. Four losses. Four losses four in his losses last five first. games. Yeah, I think it's four losses in four games for Nathan Jones. Still hasn't scored a goal from open play either. Um, so we could actually better the Boer's record then. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, it's, I mean, it was a risky appointment in the first place, yeah. wasn't it? It was a risky appointment in, in it the was first field, place. Yeah. He'd worked with a very different style of squad at Luton to what he's worked with, working with now at Southampton. I think across the course of the first half of the season at Luton, he'd only given 20 minutes of football to under-23 players. And now he's being tasked with working with one of the youngest squads in the league where the transfer committee have effectively shifted the entire policy to signing some of the best academy talents out of other clubs. And some of those talents have been brilliant. You know, Livermento looks amazing, doesn't he? Romeo Lavia, when he's been fit, looks great. Even some of the players they bought in from abroad, like Bella Kotchap looks very strong. Salasu recently looks very strong. But they can't score a goal. Like, mm -hmm. they, they can't score a goal. And the pressure... I feel like even after four games, is already massive on Nathan Jones. Like Southampton fans are already up in arms about him. That is extremely concerning after yeah. four games. Like you've got to give him time. You yeah, cannot you cannot sack Nathan Jones after four games after giving him a miniature preseason during the World Cup. But changing formations regularly, changing personnel too regularly, doesn't feel like he knows what his best eleven is despite having that miniature preseason. I, He's meandering towards problems, Lampard yeah. territory already, I, I agree. And it's probably worth saying that it, on the subject of fan bases who expect better, when you were talking about West Ham, Vieira, Rodgers mm. have been a little bit underwhelming of late, haven't they? Of course, Leicester were good before the World Cup. Palace, if I remember correctly, had a solid start, but it's gone a little bit uh, haywire since. Um, not to say they're in trouble, but I think their fan bases will be thinking... Oh, I thought we were going to kick on mm. or I thought we were going to recover from a, a blip last season and it's not really happened. Uh, I think the Leicester one may be harder to decide from. We'll have to do that in a separate video because their squad is looking thin yeah. at the moment. Um, but yeah, let us know who you think is going to win the sack race in the comments below. And uh, that has been winners and losers for this week. Stick around for more great content on Football Daily and Euro Football Daily. If you're not subscribed to the channel, do so right now and turn notifications on. Uh, and Joe and I will catch you very soon. Uh, him on We Need to Talk, me on Sunday Vibes. Goodbye.